All right. Happy New Year's Eve, everyone. Um, I, I, my name is Daniel. I do have the privilege of sharing the last message for the year of 2023. And so um, we are actually finishing up our parable series with this last teaching on God's kingdom. You know, even as we are exploring our theme of this past year, of seeking first his kingdom. And so, yes, it is the last day of 2023. And although we do not have a, a specific traditional New Year's Eve message, the message that I do have to share for us essentially does reinforce our 2023 team, uh, theme as we also look forward to our 2024 theme of waiting upon the Lord. And um, I don't know for you, but 2023 was kind of like a blur for me. You know, I still can't believe that uh, this year has come and gone. And, you know, what a year it's been, to be honest. You know, maybe personally for you, it's been, for some, maybe really good. Maybe for some, not so much. But as a church together, man, what a year it's been. So much has happened, and if we don't stop, take a step back to take it all in, it can really go over your head. And um, I think one way to really describe it is to say that truly God has been faithful. You know, over a year ago, this time today, we were not here at this place. And none of us would have truly imagined or foresaw that we would be here today. And so with the theme of seeking first Christ and his kingdom, we as a church together came to know that perhaps there's still a role and purpose for Family Chapel in serving his kingdom in Los Angeles. You know, by God's grace and provision and his sovereign timing, um, it was really a joy to see, you know, we got settled in, we got adjusted we had to learn new methods, new operations. And you know, now it's slowly starting to feel like we're a little bit more rooted, like our feet is on the ground. And I know the temptation then is to want to just take off running. You know, let's get going. But I do think there is reason and wisdom in waiting, especially waiting upon the Lord. But I will say that waiting is not a passive endeavor. It is an active living with anticipation. In other words, the first thing we must understand about waiting upon the Lord is, be, is we wait by seeking first his kingdom. And here the two themes come together. You know, seeking first the kingdom of God is then in living an active response and anticipation of the kingdom at hand and the kingdom to come. And so I want to just really unpack this today and what that might look like for us. And so let's look at our passage and our parable together found in Matthew 22. We're going to just read through the whole thing. Matthew 22, we're going to be in verses 1 through 14. Let's read through this together and let's really unpack what God's word has for us. And starting in verse 1, it says this. And again, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son and sent his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding feast, but they would not come. Again, he sent other servants, saying, Tell those who were invited, See, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. But they paid no attention and went off, one to his farm, another to his business. While the rest seized his servants, treated them shamefully, and killed them. The king was angry, and he sent his troops and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding feast is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, to the main roads and invite to the wedding feast as many as you find. And those servants went out into the roads and gathered all whom they found, both bad and good. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to look at the guests, he saw there a man who had no wedding garment. And he said to him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, bind him hand and foot and cast him into the outer darkness, in that place where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. And this is the reading of God's word. Now, the context 
of the parable that we have just read is towards the end of Jesus' ministry, you know, after Jesus rides into Jerusalem on a donkey, he is approached and he's challenged by all of these religious leaders and elders at the time. And so specifically, he is addressing them and the crowds with three successive parables on how the religious elites and others are rejected by God because they refuse to see and, re, and they also reject the message of his kingdom. And so this parable that we have just read is, a, is the last of those three parables. And I will say that when we read something like this, the temptation is, look, while we may not be, hopefully, one of those who outright rejects God's kingdom, I think there's still much for us to take heed of. This parable is a much-needed reminder, and, and albeit a warning, for faithful response and living. In essence, the, the message that the parable is trying to portray is, do not reject his call and his invitation, and do not live as one unworthy of his kingdom. And so let's unpack these things together. And the first thing for us that I will say, uh, for, uh, the truth for us to take in is this. Seek first his kingdom in active response. Seek first his kingdom in active response. You see, the marriage feast was a picture of the blessings that come, that have come with God's kingdom and thus salvation itself. It represented the joy, the celebration, and the prosperity that we experience, that we enjoy together as a community of God's people. And so that's why so many of the references and the events and the teachings surround this particular event, the wedding feast. But they rejected it. Now, usually those who are, who are invited to a wedding feast like this would have already received an initial earlier invitation, and then it was customary to send a secondary reminder and invitation again to tell them when the feast was ready. And so the rejection at hand is now that the feast is ready, they again refuse to come. The ones that the king had invited did not come. And it's clear that, a par- that this parable is aimed, like I said, at the already religious. The ones who are expected to come. The ones who claim to be for the king and his kingdom. But they didn't come. Why? Because they rejected his kingdom. Now, there's the obvious reason and there's the obvious rejection at hand. Those who not only reject the message and turn away, but even oppose it. They reject it because it's not their kingdom. It's not their way. This was not what I expected. This was not what I wanted, so I reject it. This is that active rejection. But then Jesus mentions actually a secondary reason, and this is probably the one that we have to pay attention more to. And there's also the passive rejection. The passive rejection. Where Jesus says, but they refuse to come because they pay no attention to it. And they went about their business. Some to their farm, some to their business. This is the passive rejection. The indifference and the apathy that builds. And slowly, you begin to say, I've got other things to do. You know, God's kingdom is great. Marriage feast, it's great, but I've got other things to do. I have a higher priority for my own kingdom. And it's this passive rejection in which many then fail to live and thrive in God's kingdom. Now, every one of us, I understand, we have our own lives And to be honest, sometimes, or many times, it feels chaotic. Uh, I don't know how 2023 has been going or has been for you. And even when not a lot is happening in your life, sometimes you get anxious in those moments because you feel like you really need to get your life moving in some kind of direction. All the while, it's just, it's hard just enough to live. You know, I had a, conversation with a friend recently 
who's thinking of quitting her job at a clinic that she works at, and rather than, than that, and staying just home with the kids. Um, and the reason is because, you know, these daycare prices for multiple kids are getting ridiculous. Now, I wasn't aware of this, and so for those of you who know, you know, I'll pray for you, but I looked at it, and I was like, man, what is that? that that's how much it costs per month? And she was like, that's per week. And I was like, I, I was offended for her. Right? I was, just, I was like, I'll pray for you right now. Right? And, and, and then I had a, another group of friends, and the conversation that I had with them eventually veered towards the realization that we, we may never be able to afford a home in California, not anytime soon. Then I'm sure there are those who are just, just even trying to navigate the workforce, finding a job, the job market. All the while, now in 2023, you can't even eat a meal for less than $15, let alone $20. It's not like your paycheck went up like that. Even for groceries. Me and my brother have this thing that sometimes we go to Costco and things like that. We have to get stuff that we need. And both of us try to guess how much the final price is, right? And whoever comes closer will pay. Right, and, and sometimes you look at it and you're like, Man, dude, we bought that much? $200? It's not even that much. It's how it is. And so you become weary, become stressed, and you lose sight, distracted, anxious, or just plain bored. And you, you see, you begin to have this thing within you where you begin to feel inside, where you say, man, I've got other things to do. So the things of God in this kingdom, my relationship with him, they slowly begin to suffer. You know, I'm, I'm supposed to be like that watchman on the wall, vigilant, alert, ready, prepared, looking for his coming, ready for his coming. But it's easy to grow weary. It's easy to grow weary. And so the warning that we have here is, is be wary, especially of this passive rejection of indiscreetly living then for your own kingdom because this is a rejection in its own way. And I want us to understand that when we're, we're, think, we're talking about seeking his kingdom, when we're talking about prioritizing a kingdom, it's this. It means to let your relationship with God shape and inform every priority in your life. So yes, there is that idea about wanting to impact the things of God. But seeking first his kingdom also means letting God impact all things in your life. This is how then we live in active response, you see? So you, maybe some of you are saying, you know, I've been praying and waiting and searching for that job. Well, then keep praying. In the meantime, cultivate your heart and trust. And especially your motivations with God. And you're working on your resume or preparing for applications, and you saturated then with the wisdom from the Word of God. So live in active response as ones who are graciously called and invited to live and serve in his kingdom. And I encourage you today then, be faithful as he has been faithful to you and renew your strength. And the second thing here then for us is seek first his kingdom in active change and good fruit. Seek first his kingdom in active change. You see, it's not just those who reject. It's not just those who live in passive indifference to the kingdom that don't live faithfully in this kingdom, but it's also those who don't change. You know, there's this strange part of the parable at the end referencing a particular man 
who showed up to the wedding but didn't have the right clothing, it says. Now, it's not clear what that garment was meant to be. Right? Some speculate that in that time, it was customary for the king or the nobleman to provide specific wedding clothes that the guests would have to wear. It's kind of like maybe similar to today, like how the bridal party wears those matching dresses and the matching suits for the men. Maybe that could be it, but other commentators actually point out that it was more likely referring to just appropriate wedding feast attire. Usually it would be your best clean and white garments. Now, whatever the case it is, the point of the parable is that it was pointing out that the man was out of place and in the wrong. The parable itself notes that when the, initially, the ones who were initially invited refused to come, they rejected and they refused to come, then the servants went out to the streets, the main roads it says, and the invitation was given to all who would come. But in order to enjoy the feast and to honor the king and his son, they had to have changed. And so the idea is this, was come, but you shall not remain as you are. The reality of God's kingdom over and over again that we see Jesus preach and teach is you can't just do and live however as you like in God's kingdom. There is then, yes, an expectation of surrender and holiness and change. And so as I've stated before, a lot has changed in 2023. Yes? But did you change? What kind of fruits did you bear? And so, you know, you look around externally. You look around at church. A lot has happened. A lot has changed. You look around maybe even at your personal life. A lot of events, a lot of new life stages. A lot of may have happened, maybe for some, maybe not at all. But I'll encourage you and exhort you, but also then look at your heart. Was there good fruit? Was there growth? Or was it bad? Was it bad fruit? Or no fruit at all? You know, perhaps before God wants to use you and our church family chapel to really advance his kingdom, he's calling you to prepare for what's to come. He wants to then work on your heart and your character and your relationship with him and your relationship with others. And I don't know where I've heard this, but I remember this saying that says, you know, while you're waiting upon the Lord, perhaps the Lord is waiting upon you. And he's been very patient. Seek first his kingdom in active change and fruit. And lastly, I'll just end with this. Seek first his kingdom in active waiting. You know, I mentioned this in the beginning, but seek first his kingdom in active waiting. As, as noted before, one of the more common themes and illustrations of Christian life and kingdom realities is that of a wedding feast and marriage. And one of the main reasons is because it's meant to be a foretaste, a shadow of what's to come, that there is a very real feast that is in store for us. And we are the ones who are called and invited. A tangible, real feast with Christ our Lord. But this doesn't mean that we just sit around and wait. No, we prepare and we hope. And in doing so, then we receive the blessings, we receive the assurances, and we receive the strength now. And also, then, we will maximize our enjoyment and fulfillment of his kingdom to come. You know, it's kind of like when you go on a trip. You know, back before COVID, uh, I went on a Euro trip. And um, this was before I was here at FC, before COVID as well. And you know, I was in between ministries and I had a lot of time, so I've always wanted to go to Europe, and so this was my opportunity to do so. And I went to Italy, I went to France, Germany, Czech Republic, Austria, and Croatia. 
kind of did a big old circle around the middle of Europe. And it's quite an itinerary, to be honest. You know, I, and I made the most of this opportunity. And, you know, for me, I don't know if you're like me, but when I vacation, I, I, I enjoy sightseeing. You know, that's something that I prioritize. And, you know, while it's great to sit and relax at a beach resort, maybe some of you, that's your priority, but I would choose sightseeing more. Mainly because I, I love history, and I find so many of these, of these things fascinating. But when you have an itinerary like that, when you have a plan like that, when you, especially when you have such a big itinerary, there's a lot to prepare for, and there's a lot to plan for. And I notice that the best, best parts of the trip that I enjoyed the most were the parts in which I really took the time to anticipate and prepare for. Not just the details, but I'm talking about looking into the history and researching the significance of the sights and sounds that I'll experience. Because the preparation maximized my anticipation and thus maximized my experience. While some other parts of the trip that, you know, I, I, I didn't, you know, I got kind of tired preparing so much and I didn't really prepare for, it wasn't that memorable. Sometimes you got to go out and you're like, okay, so what am I looking at here, right? And, and so the point is that we as Christians, yes, we look forward to his kingdom to come and we wait, but we anticipate with hope. We anticipate what God may do with our church. We anticipate and look forward to what God has in store for our own lives. But we live in active waiting by being faithful now and preparing now. And so this is the exhortation I want to reinforce as we conclude our year together. Live as those who are called and made worthy by the grace of God. Just like the people in the parable who are out on the main roads, graciously invited in to partake, we also were graciously called and invited into his kingdom and thus clothed with Christ's righteousness. Then church, live and respond as those who have been made worthy by the grace of God. And also live in hopeful anticipation of God's timing. Trust in God's good work and his good timing. He's never late. And in the meantime, search your heart. Mend relationships. Do not grow weary in serving and renew that heart of worship. Perhaps rather than a New Year's resolution, it is, the point is to make a renewed dedication. You know, I truly believe there's a lot in store for you and for our church. And to him then, who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, let us be faithful in seeking first his kingdom, even as we wait upon the Lord. Amen. Let's pray together. And so I encourage you to pray. You know, I, th I think it's an appropriate time for us, even as uh, 2023 ends and we wake up tomorrow morning with 2024. Let's make a renewed dedication. You know, we will live in active response. And that we will really search our hearts in the ways and the areas of our life in which God is calling us to grow, God is calling us to change. That we may live for his glory and his honor. And so this is how we will seek first his kingdom even as we wait upon the Lord. Let's pray at this time.
And so, Father, we come before you, Lord, rededicating ourselves unto you. Lord, we may not know of what's to come, and we may not know when, but Lord, we will wait. And we will actively seek you. And so, Father, may we continue to live in faithful surrender and trust. Truly, you have been faithful to us beyond what we could ever ask for and hope for, beyond what we could deserve in 2023. None of us could have asked for more. And so, Father, we worship you and exalt you. In Jesus' name we pray.